and a good morning to all of you. Hey there, it is Gord, your hurting hippie, for Friday. And yeah, welcome to The Difference a Lay Makes. I do have to explain that. And The Sky Didn't Fall. I have to explain that too. <laughs> How y'all doing? I hope you've had a good week as we enter into a weekend. Yes, a weekend. The time when other people leave you alone and you can concentrate on your family and your friends and not your work. For most of us. For most of us. Friends, what do I mean by the difference a lay makes? Just a little play on the difference a day makes. But a lay, a sleep a nap, some rest. I have talked quite a lot about my insomnia. It has been really, really bad. And I have been, oh my goodness, inside myself more than I have ever before. Oh, by the way, shout out. Sorry. Uh, I have been inside my head so bad, I thought Dave got a brother and moved him into my brain too. But it really was just this horrible lack of sleep. I was getting worse every single day. And then two nights ago, and I I do thank, as I said, shout out, Canada's finest, because I'm sure that, that between that peanut butter breath, which is really strong and a good insomnia medicine, and super skunk, which is less strong, but really in-depth, good work on things like uh, super skunk works on nightmares, entering REM sleep, and insomnia. So between those two, I had a good night's sleep two days in a row now, and yesterday, for the first time in, I would say, months, I went for my two-hour nap, and instead of getting 45 minutes of sleep and an hour and a bit, yes, my math, doing maths, uh, and an hour and 15 of restless moving around, hoping to find the right position, yesterday I actually slept almost the whole two hours and then last night really good sleep too yeah i'm still bothered in the morning with my ibs and all the other troubles it never ends with fibro and this degenerative disease and all the other crap i got going on very severe arthritis in the shoulders but oh well if you get enough sleep at least the mind is crisp and clean and that really crisp and clean is the way to say it but i'm not going to talk about why the sky didn't fall not yet first we're going to put this over i had a beautiful morning a tiring one but a beautiful one i walked pasha to school as as i do when he's at my place and I enjoy the walks, and it was a beautiful sky. And then I got home, and I'm a bit tired, because that's a two-kilometer back and forth. I just got home, just got my shoes off, and Pasha phones. He forgot his homework at home, and I had to bring it to him. So on with the shoes. Off I went again. Beautiful, brisk morning. Very tired hippie. My back is killing me, but it was well worth it. So I've already, it's only 9 a.m. and I've already walked four kilometers. So I thought, why not take you along the trip? Why don't you take a little break and join me in that music and the morning. The beautiful sky, the city, and my beautiful boy. So, pitter patter.
you enjoyed that. We'll let the music wind down. And that was beautiful. The sky was on fire. Sometimes the pictures don't do so much, but I've had some great feedback from y'all. I'm a different kind of photographer. I, when I see something in the sky or in front of me or a leaf or something, I see it in an abstract way. I see it in an artistic form. Then I take its picture. Then I adjust the picture to match my brain, which will make it kind of weird. It's what I do. People like it. I enjoy it. It's my it's my therapy. I, when I do anything photographically, I get relaxed and I get I get inside my head instead of Dave being inside my head. I can push him away sometimes for hours. So thank you for listening to that. And we're up to part two, the why the sky didn't fall. And then we'll get to little known facts, okay? Why the sky didn't fall. This is a really good story from Global News, and I will attach it below. But the sky didn't fall. Police, lawyers, still adjusting after cannabis legalization. Global News did a little report on the first year away. The first year of legalization. The first year of legalization. Police lawyers and advocates say that one year into cannabis legalization, Canada has a long way to go to stamping out the black market and pot-impaired driving. It's like, like they think it's a, a horrible thing going on and it's not. We can't call it a success at this point, said some silly chief of police in Abbotsford. <laughs> he said organized crime market share and youth consumption have not yet fallen and tools to detect stone drivers are still lacking that's a funny way to look at it but sir who also co-chairs the canadian association of chiefs of police drug advisory committee said resources and workloads have not changed much when you talk to chiefs across the country the sky didn't fall Statistics can say 541 people were charged under the Federal Cannabis Act between October 17, the legalization day, and the end of the year, and it includes 190 people with various selling offenses and 95 people charged with possessing illicit cannabis of more than 30 grams. In the past year, Alberta and Manitoba have each issued more than 2,000 tickets under provincial laws, while in Ontario there have been more than 7,000 charges. Toronto cannabis lawyer Jack Lloyd says he's been busy. We're still criminalizing behavior that is supposed to be legal. He says, we've got a long way to go to make sure that we've got fair and sensible regulations, but cannabis is legal and we should be very proud of that. There's some things that need to be cleaned up and improved. Sometimes you go to court for that. Sometimes you talk to the government about that. The cost of legal cannabis is still too high. Barriers for medical access are still too high. And access to high quality cannabis is also being stymied. So that's kind of what the story says, how it goes on. I'll let you all read further if you wish but basically there's two sides of the coin there's the police saying ha we don't have the tools to charge enough people with crimes yet it's their paradigm right and then you got the lawyer who's on the side of the people who say says there's too many charges going on and he does go on to say that because of the cost of a lawyer people often pay the fine rather than fighting it in court. And that has to change because if they're charging us in incorrect situations, that's the place that we slowly, as I've said, it'll take four to five years for this market and all the regulations to slowly prove themselves and either new regulations will come in, old regulations will get debunked, that kind of thing. This is the beginning of it. We're only part way there. The sky didn't fall. And we're all still doing okay. 
Friends, I got a lot more to say, but that's going to be in Hippie Unplugged, which only the people below marked as Patreon supporters get to see. I'm sorry, but I, there's been a lot going on in the news lately, and I feel I need to get it out. So that will be coming to you, Patreon supporters, within the next day or two. And remember, a little housekeeping. I sometimes don't do a video on Saturday. I have Pasha, and I just may not get one out tomorrow. So friends, give this one the thumbs up. Let's let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get those numbers up there. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh, and you thumbs downers, do it. Do it, my friends, because it helps. Thanks. So where are we on little known facts? Uh, we talked about, yeah, we, we talked about there is a Colorado active volcano. So... And if you didn't know it, I'm not going to say it now. Go back to my previous video. <laughs> the first movie ever to put out a motion picture soundtrack was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hmm. If you point your car keys to your head, it increases the remote's signal range. This works by using your brain to act as a radio transmitter. And I'm sure it's really good for you. My friends, peace and cheers, love and harmony. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. And there's always more to come. Catch you on the flip side.